and if it's me. So we never learn the safety rules because we're only silly fools. Gnome Skulls, we are the Safety Patrol. We have come to drive you away from this fair land. But we want to stay here. There is no place for you, careless Gnome Skulls, on Safety Island. Be gone. Be gone! Come, children. We will lead you to Safety Island. <laughs> Quite an actor, our Tommy. Oh, they were all good. Well, I have to scoot back to the office. All right, dear. I'll ride with Mrs. Keith. We want to shop anyway. Oh, it was a lovely performance, children. This morning, you were all wonderful. It was a fine safety play. Thank you, Miss Mitchell. I'm not ever going to be a callous numbskull. I'm going to grow up to be a patrol boy. Like Tommy Tucker, and never be in an accident. Not him. Yes, it is. The boys told me when I called the station just now. Yes, this is the mayor. What? In the hospital? I'll be right over. I tell you, Mrs. Blake, I was sick when I heard about it. Just sick. Oh, it's awful. He was such a... Oh, I just can't talk about it. Where's our Tommy, Tommy Tucker? Oh, yes, right you there. In the emergency room, to the left. Thank, Thank you. They just brought him in. I know. Everybody in town is saying the same thing. Why did it have to happen to him, of all people? I know, but, but we're his parents. I'm sorry. Ready, Doctor. We'll have to work fast. have to stop and be identified, son. Why, I know where I am. This is the entrance to Safety Island. That's right, lad. I know it. Why, this is exactly like I thought it would be. Just exactly. I learned all about Safety Island in our school pageant. Of course, your school pageant was just play acting. This is the real thing. The real safety island. Gee, I think I'd like it here. That's fine, son. I'll get the book and check you in.
Now, what's your name, lad? Tommy. Tommy Tucker. Just like in the nursery rhyme. Only I don't sing very well, sir. Tucker. Tucker. Oh, Tommy Tucker, is it? Why, Tommy, I know all about you. You do? Sure. I've been watching you through my earthoscope. <laughs> Look, I'll show you. Now, Tommy, look right through there. You see? That's the town where you live. Gee. But, Tommy, uh, now that I think of it, you aren't supposed to leave the Earth for a long, long time. As a matter of fact, your name isn't even in my book. It isn't? No. But, look, I've got an idea. We could use a fellow like you on Safety Island. Maybe I can get permission to put your name in the book. I'd like that. Fine. Come with me. some careless gnome skulls over there. You mean they really are careless gnome skulls? Oh, yes. But you don't have to worry about them anymore. They can't get on the safety island. Come on. Pulse is weak, Doctor. Very weak. Well, sir, this is what happened. There was an accident. The result of a little, well, carelessness. Oh, I see. The gnome skulls again. Will people never learn to look out for them? So all you have to do is the usual thing. Just give me a written permit to put Tommy's name in the book here. I'd like to recommend, and in fact, I'd like to urge, sir, that you do it right now. Then Tommy is not yet... Uh... I mean... No, sir. Not yet. But if you let me record his name, that'll take care of it automatically. I see. You see, I, well... Well, I have a very special reason for wanting to take advantage of this particular case. Before I actually do give you permission to write in Tommy's name, suppose you tell me your very special reason why you want Tommy to... Uh, to join us here on Safety Island at this time rather than later. Well, it's a long story, sir. Here, if you watch the screen on the earthoscope here, I'll turn the time dial back. Well, sir, the story begins a little over a year ago in Tommy's hometown. It was boys' day. You know, when the lads take over the city offices? Well, Tommy here was acting mayor for the day. Well, Tommy, what would you do if you were really mayor? I mean, for more than just today. Mr. Mayor, I try to make our town the safest one in the country. And how would you do that? Just like I wrote in my essay in school. I have a whole plan for doing it. And he did have a plan for a safety campaign. What's more, it was a good one, a practical plan. My dad helped me with it, but the mayor liked it. He liked it so much, he made an official fruct proclamation. That he did. And the whole town got behind it and put it over. It became the basis for a complete safety program. Look. As a result, in less than six months, as far as traffic accidents were concerned, the town was actually the safest in the country. Everybody cooperated and really got into the spirit. Courtesy became the watchword of the town. Police Department established special safety inspection lanes to be doubly sure that every car in town met the safety standards. The Police Department also helped out by working with the schools and teaching classes in pedestrian safety to children. Now let's see, how many can tell me what's wrong with picture number two? 
Uh, all right, young lady, suppose you tell us what's wrong with this picture. He should have walked to the corner where the patrol boy was. That's absolutely right. Now, what else did he do that was wrong? Uh, all right. Should not have walked between the parked cars. That's right. And do all your children know why? Because it is dangerous. One of the cars might start up and pinch his legs bad. Another car might be coming along the street and couldn't see him in time to stop. I know another reason. You do? And what's that? If he walked between the parked cars, he might get his new clothes dirty. That would make his mother mad. And her grown-ups, too, had lessons in safety. The parent-teachers, the civic club, and, well, just about every other organization in town did everything possible to make the program a complete success. So, as you can see, the Citizens Committee has come a long way in rounding out this, the Tommy Tucker Safety Program. We've installed new signal lights where needed, and we've done a lot of other things, like getting rid of the blind spot at the Second Avenue Bridge. But this is merely a progress report. The job is far from finished. We still have a lot of, well, educating to do, because safety is always everybody's business. And believe me, Tommy really started something with his safety program, and it got results. Why, it wasn't long before every citizen of Tommy's town was safety-minded. All of the local automobile dealers cooperated by reminding motorists to maintain a regular mechanical check of their cars. One of them had a series of regularly scheduled safety movies right in the showroom. And not only are our highways patrolled, painted with safety lanes, guarded with safety warning signs, and new signal lights installed where needed, but the highways themselves are engineered for safety. Organizations such as the Automobile Manufacturers Association, the Inter-Industry Highway Safety Committee, the National Safety Council, are constantly working to improve the safety habits of drivers and pedestrians alike. And each year, the automobile manufacturers spend millions of dollars designing and building still greater safety into every possible part of the cars they make. Yes, the all-steel bodies, the safety glass, sealed beam headlights, four-wheel hydraulic brakes, ever safer tires, safety rims, and the hundreds of other safety features and refinements contribute enormously to the safe driving record of the car. But the complete, the absolute safety of the car depends on the skill, the knowledge, the safety habits of the drivers and the pedestrians. In other words, it all depends on you. So you can see, sir, that everybody in town worked hard to put the safety program over. And our town really became the safest community in the country, too, sir. I even had my picture in a magazine because our accident record was cut way, way down. That's true. Well, at least it was true for a while. And then gradually the old constant menace came back again. What's the constant men... what you said? Well, Tommy, the constant menace to safety is... Well, it's carelessness. Occasionally taking little chances. You mean the careless gnome skull? Exactly. Let me explain. While we all know that a great number of accidents are caused by plain, reckless driving and by people who break laws, like jaywalking or crossing against the traffic signals, driving too fast or driving when intoxicated, there are still a lot an awful lot of accidents that are caused by people who think they're good drivers or careful pedestrians. I call them the fringe people because they're always on the fringe of an accident. You know why? Because every so often they take little chances. They become careless gnome skulls who think that accidents can only happen to the other fellow. And I'll tell you something else. Almost every person who drives is occasionally guilty of this, well, this thoughtlessness. Look. I think you should see this, sir. 
There's Mr. J.B. Anderson. Now he knows better than to get out on that side of the car. And as a rule, he doesn't do it. But today, he takes a chance. He just doesn't think. Or look over here. See, he forgot to signal. Well, he got away with it that time. But someday, he won't. There's a gnome skull racing to beat the light just to save a few seconds. And why didn't this fellow wait until he was sure it was safe to walk? And how about this? Mrs. Foster wouldn't think of breaking a traffic rule, but she's daydreaming at the wheel. Boy, that was a close one. And look at this gnome skull. Oh, he knows better than that. That's Mr. Stapleton. He's even on the safety committee. Now do you see what I mean by the constant menace? The fringe people who every once in a while take chances? Yes. Yes, of course. It was a driver just like that. A person who'd never had a serious accident before, who was the cause of the accident involving Tommy here. Of course, that driver is very sorry now. He'd give anything in the world to undo the harm, but as always, it's too late now. Of course, maybe it was kind of my fault, too, a little bit. Maybe I was the careless gnome skull. Oh? But I wouldn't be if I could stay here on Safety Island. Well, sir, I feel it might do some real good if Tommy stays up here with us. How? Well, since Tommy was so closely associated with safety in his town, his accident might serve as an impressive object lesson. Nurse, is... how's Tommy? The doctor says... Well, if we could only get Tommy to help. To fight, to want to... <laughs> oh, Tommy, Tommy, please. Please, Tommy, please. Tommy, Tommy. Tommy, Tommy, I want you, Tommy. No, I, I don't think I want to be an object lesson after all. I think I want to go home. But son, the very fact that you, Tommy Tucker, the boy who inspired the safety campaign, is no longer there, might have an effect on the townspeople like nothing else ever could. Exactly. Might have the effect of shocking the people back into their careful habits. Why, it's working already. Look, Charlie Hooker has decided not to take a chance on passing that truck. Yesterday, he may have tried it. Even Billy Phipps is making a proper arm signal. And he's remembering the rights of pedestrians, too. And the pedestrians are waiting at the curb, waiting until the signal changes. Don't you see, Tommy? They're remembering you. And driving and walking safely. See, once again, they're remembering not to take those little chances. Remembering not to be gnome skulls. But please, sir, my mommy and my dad are awful worried about me. And, and I don't want to stay here. Won't you please, please let me go back to my mother and dad? But Tommy, if you go back, most of the people will forget about this in a few weeks and get careless all over again. No, they won't. Please. Of course, your parents won't forget. Nor will the person who caused the accident ever. Other people will remember, too. I... I promise on my honor as a Cub Scout to tell people not to take chances when they drive or to be careless about little things when they walk. Most everybody wants to be good. I just know they do. If you let me go back, I promise to tell everybody I see that they just got to be careful and keep their minds on it all the time. I'll tell the kids to be careful when they walk or play. 
I tell the grown-ups to be careful when they drive and signal and not speed or take even the tiniest chance ever. Honest, I will. Besides, I don't want my accident to ruin the life of the person who hit me. It wasn't on purpose. I just know it wasn't. Won't you please, please let me keep on living with my mother and dad? I... I love them, and they love me. I want to go home. Well, sir? I'm afraid it's no use. You see, I believe as Tommy grows up, he will keep his promise. Tommy? I know that you and other boys and girls like you are going to try to inspire others to be safety-minded, to develop safety habits, both as drivers and as pedestrians. Yes, sir. We will. So, Tommy is going to go back. Tommy is going to be all right. <laughs>